like I said, man, bro, like I pull, I'm pulling this together, you know, uh, based on based on conversations that have taken place mm-hmm. between myself and yourself and Baba and others, just about developing and forwarding the movement. Yeah, um, yeah. There's yeah. no time better than the present to utilize the technology, utilize the lockdown, quarantine type stuff to um for yeah for some stuff. Yeah, so, um, like I spoke to you earlier, I've just pulled together a few people that I think are influencers, you know, inspirations and movers and shakers in their own right. And you're one of them. And then you're the first <laughs> that I'm doing it with. And spontaneously, I spoke to you earlier on and a few hours later, we're locking it down. So um, our way. <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking forward to just opening up a conversation with you, man, and just seeing, yeah. you know, who and what you are, what you bring. And, you know, we're going to bounce around and, build on what we've developed so far and see where we'll see it, see where we can go with this. But um, I think for the benefit of the audience, it makes sense. You kind of, yeah, you can introduce yourself, who you are. And yeah, man, do it organically, man, how do you feel? All right, so y'all, um, so as a, a pair of my, uh, my commerce business, the governmental name, Justin Petty, uh, but uh, my most best known as, uh, Murubaki, Baba Murubaki. I'm coming, coming here from Highland Park, which is basically a, 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 a small uh, suburb or hamlet of Detroit. It's, it's, we call it the capital of Detroit City. So that's where I'm uh, reaching out from with my brother, Darren. Uh, yeah, so what's up, my man? Introduce... Uh, it's very very lightweight introduction, man. I, you know, I unfold as we go on in our discussion, man. All right, so I, I'm gonna open it up like this. I'm gonna um, base it on how I know you have connected with you, yeah. and I think um, over a good, I think it's about six years ago now when I first visited Detroit, and um, yeah. I got to connect with the Detroit entheogenic community by way of Baba Kalinde E. And rest yeah. in power. And um, that was my plug into you, your work, who you were, you know, and um, we connected and we built. And yeah. since then, you've, you know, you've come over to the UK, you mm-hmm. spread the spores in the UK at the Breaking Convention, you know, and mm-hmm. you plugged in via Skype or one of the, yeah, I think it was Skype at the time to one of the events we was holding in London. And yeah. you also yeah. intro the female women's entheogenic. Um, event that we held there in London too. So you came and touched down and as I said, touched many people. And then we was due to have you back. You know, well, we're due to have you back and still we'll have you back again in the coming future. And I'm due to be over the States for me and you to connect again and, you know, just kept continue the developments. No doubt. Um, again, I was much inspired by your um, research, you know, the information that you was delivering. We connected on so many levels, you know, as far as the path and the info itself. And obviously, Baba, you know, connecting us and making sure that we could, you know, build together was, you know, instrumental in, as to where I'm at now, doing the work that I'm doing and making this happen, what we're doing today. Yeah. I'm happy to have made the connection with you, bro. And um, I just think I'm going to take the conversation first, man, is just the introduction, you know, our mutual friend, ally, elder, teacher, Baba, and just share with us how you connect with him. When was your connection with Baba and, you know, what's the deal with that? Oh, man. Oh yeah. Uh, well, I first met Baba Kalindi when I was about nineteen, well twenty. Um, <clears throat> you know, I was out here heavy in the movement, uh, and so one of the things that I would do annually was organize a self determination conference, and so it, it always centered around uh, education, self defense, economics, uh, food security, and uh, and culture, and so. Uh, you know, consulting with the elders, trying to see the best and brightest luminaries in our community that I could present to this conference and that we can engage. And so uh, somebody had mentioned uh, Kalindi in regards to uh, defense, self-defense. And so, you know, I invited him. We met very briefly. You know, he shared on the panel. We didn't really um, exchange much because anybody knows Kalindi, you know, if you just initially meet him, he's not, you know, a, a real, he doesn't seem talkative if you don't know him, or if you didn't know him. And um, so a year later, um, I got involved 
uh, with uh, Republic of New Africa, uh, which is a, a, a revolutionary group that's been started in the early 60s. And uh, part of that um, meant, you know, securing events, rallies, important people uh, in our community, making sure they were safe. So once again, um, in this, I was referred to start training with Kalindi. And so as for the few people may not know, Kalindi's like a profound martial artist. I'm, you know, he was, you know, doing the uh, MMA before it was MMA. And he, he had a, created a name for himself because um, contrary to what people believe, they think, you know, martial arts is something that comes out of China exclusively. And he challenged that notion uh, that it came out of China. And he developed a, a, a martial arts system that's based on the fighting systems of Africa. And of course, they wanted to test them. And so him and his crew, they proved it. And so uh, as a young man, I was sent to train with these guys. And that's when we began training uh, through the martial arts, African martial arts. And uh, after several years of training with them, as we advanced up, um, I inquired about the highest level of trying to, that the school would attain. He said, well, he said, we started the physical. He said, but ultimately the highest training is for the unseen realm. And so for a couple <laughs> of years, you know, uh, I was mystified by that. And so I kept asking him. And so it was the weirdest thing. Uh, one day he invited me and partner Jason to show up at this house, this old man's house. Now this is a funny story really quickly. Um, so he gives us the address. And so we're on the street. And I think we had the address. We did have the address wrong. So when we knocked on the door, the elder man answered. So we say, yeah, is this Mr. Johnson? He say, no, this isn't Mr. John. So me and my partner Jason thinking, Okay, this is like some old martial arts flick. He's testing us. <laughs> so we turn around and we ask him twice more. And by now, you know, it's Detroit City. He's ready to start shooting. <laughs> so luckily we realized there wasn't a space. Mr. Johnson was two houses down. And um, so we finally met him. And then so first thing he told us to do, he just said, go over to the ground and start grinding rice. Now, of course, we know what that's about now, but at the time, I didn't know. And so for hours and hours, just grinding, 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 mixing jars, and then we'd sit around, you put them in a pressure cooker. I would sit around this group, you know, these other elders, and we would just talk. And then once the, the jars were done, we would leave. And he did this every week for about, it had to be close to a year, you know, and wow. I, I'm thinking, okay, it's some training I'm learning. <laughs> Little did I know I was mastering the PF Tech, you know. Yeah, so Daniel Sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one day he uh, he blesses me with a pack, and then he, uh, you know, he he says it's time. And so my partner, I I had my experience, and then he told me, he said, now you have to, you know, you know, you keep eye out on your other brothers that's in your martial arts peer circle. So now you're gonna be the watcher for them. So I began, of course, watching for them and. It just unfolded. And then all of a sudden it expanded the community. And next thing you know, I was watching. It's so about every weekend. It was somebody, you know, at the door that I was working with. So, um, you know, it just went from there, man. We began traveling. He began showing me more about the science. We began to research it, the roots of it in uh, the continent of Africa, uh, learning the different uh, groups that uh, utilized it, how they utilized it, what they utilized it for, the history, the ancient history behind it. Uh, we began to, as as my brother Darren, uh, you know, challenge the uh, the gatekeepers of academia, you know, with their notions of uh, uh, white exclusivity or uh, of of the newness aspect of it. And so, uh, through that experience, I met you, brother Darren, you know, uh, also a very serious serious warrior, um, has done a lot, man. And so, you know, we met. And, you know, we just continued to work. So when we met up, it was pretty much, you know, what we've been doing, man, you know. Uh, and it's been a wonderful friendship because with Kalindi, a lot of people, you know, you know, he teaches a lot of people. and We were able to be friends. And so same as you, Darren, I, I know he we interacted on the level that a lot of people couldn't with him. Yeah. And so uh, just fortunate about that, man. It's just a snapshot of our relationship. But, yeah. Yeah, met up organizing, man, you know, push pushing the envelope for our folks, you know. Respect, yeah. man. Respect, man. Yeah.
Yeah, man, I, I feel powerful when I, you know, when I align with you brothers and, you know, we're putting in work, man. It's, you know, wonderful yeah. to be with, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, he, he often, he, was the, he always gave you props, man. So, you know, I, I feel good and you should too, man. He, he, he really saw us as friends, man. You know? Yeah, no, man, I'm, I'm honored, as I said, and I feel privileged. As, yeah. a, as I said, as a as a as a student watching him on DVDs, you mm -hmm. know, to connecting with him, having staying at the crib, you know, traveling the world with him, yeah, man. What else yeah. can I say, man? I, you know, I know, I know what I got to roll, you know, do I got to roll with, man? Sure, exactly, man. You know. So, um, but on that note, I just want to bring it back home. Two things, you know, you mentioned the fighting style, so you train with Baba as well with martial arts, right? As you, yeah, you're martial yeah. arts yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, traditional African martial arts was more of a combative style, you know, a quick killing man technique. Um, and, you know, uh, many people don't know that he was absolutely ferocious as such. And he was recognized by, you know, a lot of the people um, in the martial arts world, um, both um, traditional martial arts and the MMA world. Um, and, you know, it's a lot of things I wish I could disclose, but I mean, this guy was heavily recruited by, you know, military specialists and everybody else because of his technique and his ability to uh, to deal effectively. And so um, while I was a student of his, you know, we were able to do a lot of uh, security and executive protection. You know, he was the head of security for Aaliyah, you know, his brother for Aretha Franklin, you know, any of the rappers or people that would come, you know, we were uh, picked to secure him. And so... Um, yeah, he, he was profound in that regard. And so he never really spoke about it, you know, in, I guess the last decade or so he kind of, he still dealt in the world, but he didn't really, um, he didn't really speak about his prowess and his, 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 his legacy in it. And so it's a bad brother, man, you know, bad man. I'll tell you, tell you a, a super, a superhero story in a minute about him, you know, when we get oh, there. Please do. Yeah. But, um, you know, what was the fighting style? So he developed his own fighting style, martial arts, or how, what was that about? Well, he was already proficient at boxing in like several traditional Asian styles. And so, <clears throat> but he challenged the notion that, you know, um, you know, the, the original continent where all humans originated from didn't have a unique fighting style. So um, he went over and was inquiring about martial arts. And of course, they looked at him like he was crazy. Like, what are you talking about? Because in Africa, they don't have martial arts. They have societies, just like you had guilds. You know, you have your blacksmith guild, your, your woodworker guild. And so he wasn't asking the right question. The question was to ask is, where's your warrior society? And when he started asking that, that's when they started saying, oh, you want to know our warrior society? And then when he went to the warrior society, that's when they began to teach him the arts, you know. And so um, he studied um, in Sudan or, or what used to be Greater Kemet, uh, the bow technique, hand-to-hand -hand technique. Um, he mastered South African Piper style, which is a knife technique style for shorter knives. Um, he, he worked and developed and was trained in the Senegalese wrestling techniques and the boxing techniques of, of Ghana. And so um, it's basically an amalgamation of all our West uh, African fighting sciences. And each of those systems had. So like if you go to the Gambian wrestler, they have a striking system. Or if you go to South African Piper system, they have a grappling system, even though they focus on knives. And so he was able to get the best out of these systems and, and create a, a unified system. Um, but the basic of it, came out of Sudan, which was an ancient Kemetic style. Um, and a lot of people didn't believe it, um, but it was an ancient Kemetic style um, mm -hmm. called Ahasaki, you know, um, and Saki means to strike. And so uh, Aha means with great force. And so um, we went to Ghana, you know, and interacted with uh, some traditional God the Gambi people uh, for their Denav celebration, which they celebrated uh, their uh, their movement from from the Nile or a southern or northern Kemet over to Ghana, and with that they had certain rituals tra transitions that they had held for thousands of years. And so when they invited us over, first thing they asked us to do was do the school dance and do the school technique. Since we were doing African martial arts, they want to see what it was about. 
So immediately as we began doing it, they stopped and said, where did you learn that from? You know, and right then and there, they confirmed like, no, that, that came from Kemet, you know, you know, and this was in the middle of the deny ceremony amongst the God, the Gambi. And so they, they initiated him as a, you know, as a war priest. And you know, when you go to the continent, sometimes depending where you go, they yeah. get these titles away. And so, um, we, you know, he was flattered, of course, and, and he didn't realize the weight of it until we went back. And um, there was a seating of a, of a local king. And um, it was a rival king that challenged it. And so it was about to get violent, like very violent, you know? <laughs> and um, they actually came and contacted Kalindi to assign troops to him, you know? And, he, and up to this point, he's thinking like, okay, this is just like a nice, you know, honorary thing, but they were dead serious. Wow, wow, wow. You know, these are just some of the stories, man. You know, we got stories about here back in Detroit, man, the, you know, late 80s, man, with, you know, racist police, you know. Uh, tell it, man, tell it. Okay, well, you know, it was five of them. Um, they they were looking for a suspect. And anybody knows Kalindi looks like the average black male, right? Six foot tall, <laughs> large black male, you know, with a beard. <laughs> So they, they approached him and he was trying to admonish them and let them know there was there was not a problem. They were like, give me your ID. Now this, in Detroit, we don't have a, a stop, and, stop and search like New York. So we you don't just get to stop and pull people over. And so Kalindi was inquiring, like, what's the problem, man? You know, and they kept giving them a problem. And so, of course, they were obviously intimidated. So they pulled out their batons, you know. And so, um, one of the younger guys, he said, he said, man, you, you, you know, he told Kalindi told him, say, you're not gonna swing that, man. Put that up, man. It's not, it's not that dangerous. He said, get against the wall, get against the wall, you know. So then Kalindi was saying, look, I'm telling you, put the thing up. We ain't gotta, you know. So he said, nah, I'm gonna I'm crack your head open. So Kalindi said, all right, look, if you swing it, I swear that's gonna be the last baton you swing, you know. <laughs> and he and he neutralized these five officers, man. I mean. I mean, neutralize them. I mean, to the <laughs> point where it was like, neutralize them. I mean, Jeez. tow them up to the point where like, a couple of them had career ending injuries. I mean, I, and it's wow. no makeup stuff, you know what I'm saying? And um, he did it in a way where he was able to prove self-defense and walk home, you know? Nice. So this is the type of brother, you know what I'm saying? Uh, profound master, you know, uh, found it, you know, found it, Co-founded two African center schools, you know, out of his martial arts school. Just a bad man, you know what I'm saying?